Okay, we've got a conditional probability question here, and before we start, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this information on a Venn diagram. There's my Venn diagram. And let's there we go, lovely and neat. And what I've got is I've got some chemistry students in this circle here, and I've got some, let me say, F for physics students. Don't take any confusion with P. And numbers I've got, 40 chemistry only, 30 physics only, 20 in the crossover, taking both, and 60, taking neither. Grand total, 150 students. Okay, my problems. What I've got first is a conditional probability. Probability of physics, given that you take chemistry. So if you take chemistry, you're in the chemistry bubble, you are one of 60, and the probability of being a physics in there, well, there are 20 physics students in that chemistry bubble, so one third. Part B, another conditional probability, this one, physics, given that you do not take chemistry. Have a quick look here. If you do not take chemistry, you are one of these 30 or one of these 60. You're one of 90 outside of the chemistry bubble. And 30 of those happen to be physics. So outside of the chemistry bubble, 30 out of 90, one third. Our answers. Part C, two decisions to make. Taking chemistry, taking physics, Mutually exclusive we're going to deal with first. This is an easy one. Easy one if you've got um, easy if you've got Venn diagrams. Very easy to see. If things were mutually exclusive, then what we would see is we would see the two groups completely separate, nothing to do with each other. And given that we've got to justify this, what we're going to say is if we had mutually exclusive, then the crossover. Probability in that crossover would be zero. There would be no crossover. Clearly, that's not the case. It's not zero, and therefore they are not mutually exclusive. Our second question is, are they independent? Slightly more awkward, this one. If they were independent, then the probability of taking physics would be or would have nothing to do with the probability of taking chemistry, wouldn't have nothing to do with the chemistry element. So the probability of taking physics would be the same as the probability of physics dependent on chemistry, or indeed the probability of physics dependent on not taking chemistry. In other words, the dependency on chemistry is simply not there. They are independent. So that given chemistry makes no difference. So that would be true. Now, we've already been asked to work out those two. So the question is, does the probability of physics have anything to do with taking chemistry? And if we look at the probability of physics, then I reckon I can see 50 physics students out of those 150 and indeed, what we've got there is a third. In other words, physics has nothing to do, the probability of physics has nothing to do with taking chemistry or indeed not taking chemistry. In other words, they are independent. And we could do other things to show independence as well. Um, we could, for example, show that the probability of the overlap, if we are independent, then that would be true. Probability of the overlap, I think, is 20 out of 150. Probability of physics, well, that's 50 out of 150. Probability of chemistry, 60 out of 150. And if we multiply these two, let's do a little bit of cancelling first. Have we got 1, 3, 2 cancel third is 5, that's what, 2 fifteenths, 
two fifteenths, which indeed is twenty one fiftieth. So whichever way we look at it, we have got independent events.